Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be addressing this meeting because you are the ones um, uh, shaping the media sphere on all all issues that come up uh, in global or regional uh, politics. I don't want to comment uh, the statements I've heard uh, just now about uh, uh, politicians or officials in Russia, because I suppose um, we are here to discuss a different uh, matter. I remember the 1990s and the beginning uh, of um, the mil millennial uh, decade when Russia lived through a whole wave of uh, terror attacks uh, in Moscow, Volgograd, Volgodonsk and other cities of uh, Russia. So Russians uh, have close first-hand knowledge of uh, what terrorism looks like and feels like. And so it's no coincidence that the Russian government and parliament have uh, done everything in their capacity to, to make sure uh, these terror attacks will not, would not happen again in Russia. And thankfully, uh, looking at what's happening in Europe or in the Middle East today, we <coughs> feel thankful about the uh, Russian officials and uh, special services, uh, security services, who have created this system of security in Russia, which enables the Russians to feel safe. But the fact that uh, culprits get arrested in Russia at the stage of preparing terror attacks, and among them there are uh, ISIS uh, caters and uh, members of other terror groups. This uh, testifies to the fact that uh, ter terrorism prevention in Russia is uh, on a very high level, um, and we can we are capable, we are willing to share our best practices uh, with European countries, uh, which uh, have just uh, experienced two severe uh, violent terror attacks in uh, Brussels and Paris. We already met with you a few months ago when we were discussing the situation in Syria and uh, generally in the Middle East and also we were discussing the uh, the mission, the task that Russian uh, air forces have been uh, implementing in Syria in their operation. Now we're, we are able to uh, sum up our midterm uh, conclusions and results. Um, in uh, 2001, when there was this first big ter terror attack in the United States, the Americans, um, um, you know, lifted everyone to their feet. They they woke up the entire world and uh, made everyone wake up to this uh, threat. It was this big, serious at attack, uh, which made the entire international community take a very serious look at the threat of terrorists. Uh, that was when a uh, an anti-terrorist com terrorism committee was established uh, within the UN Security Council, and uh, the first resolution on combating international terrorism was taken by the Security Council. In s Subsequently, this enabled uh, the United Nations to uh, to search and uh, figure out new ways, uh, new joint ways uh, for combating terrorism uh, for the first time in history. Most importantly in that strategy was banning support in any form for any terrorist groups. So banning any type of support for any terrorist groups. And uh, quite tellingly, the first uh, country to violate this joint international strategy in covering terrorism were exactly the United States themselves. And since they started scaling the experience of working with Al-Qaeda and other groups, some of the countries in the Middle East believed that uh, they can do the same. As a result, starting from 2011, when the virus of color-coded revolutions uh, uh, engulfed the entire Middle East. We realized that Syria in 2015 and 2016 is a consequence of the American policies uh, in the Middle East uh, in the 2000s, uh, when the U.S. was uh, trying and testing different uh, uh, methods of regime change.
In the five months of its operation in Syria, the Russian government has showed that, uh, that, that there is a model for resolving international crisis through military force and negotiation, which enables you to uh, sit all the warring parties uh, at a, a bargaining table within six months and force them to admit the notion that terrorism must be excluded uh, as a solution from, approach, from approaching any international crisis. That is why we welcome the negotiation process in Geneva and the negotiations uh, in Syria. Uh, Russian uh, centers for ceasefire are very efficient. Just look at uh, the operations of the Russian military who are still staying in Syria and providing not only humanitarian assistance to civilians in Syria, but also assist the negotiating process among the parties in Syria. And even the armed opposition groups who were initially armed and trained by the U.S. and their allies, even those groups are now requesting security guarantees from Russia. Uh, they now turn to the Russian ceasefire contact centers and, and uh, the Russian military do everything they can to exclude military methods from the negotiation process in Syria. And that's great. That's a great development. But there are also new challenges that we can't fail to see. There is Daesh with its um, military, with its units, which are now spreading onto other countries. We see it strengthening its positions in Afghanistan. Over the past year, ISIS, ISIS uh, uh, groups in Afghanistan uh, have swollen up to 6,000. That's the data submitted by uh, Afghanistan itself. We recently traveled to the country and met its uh, government, um, and they told us that in the north of Afghanistan uh, alone there are 6,000 um, uh, Daesh members, uh, uh, and out of the 25 provinces of Afghanistan, 20 are now at war. The, it is a war-torn country. And this virus um, launched in the Middle East uh, by the West in 2018, uh, it, in 2011, it is now spreading onto Central Asia as well. And um, we uh, cannot um, uh, view idly uh, international, uh, the U.S.-led international coalition, uh, ignoring uh, those um, military activities, those that, that fighting, uh, which are taking part on the perimeter of Russia's uh, uh, allies uh, within the Collective Security Treaty Organization. Meeting our fellow parliamentarians in Afghanistan, uh, we also see their concern. And uh, we uh, understand uh, that they don't feel uh, insecurity despite the fact uh, that the United States with its allies uh, have been there for 15 years, uh, have been there for 15 years. Since that time, uh, no uh, modern army has been uh, established uh, which could uh, protect and uh, defend the interests of the Afghan people. No, there is no security for the civilian population in the country. No uh, uh, plants or factories uh, have been uh, uh, created, uh, no, no jobs. But uh, the Afghan people now are involved with drug trucking, uh, growing uh, opium, and feel the taste of money. Now they supply 90% of heroin to the world market. Can you imagine this figure? How can this figure uh, and the benefits, uh, can, how can it be compared uh, with the profits produced by agricultural products, while in the past it used to be the main business of uh, the Afghan people, uh, agriculture and agricultural products. Our colleagues now express great concern, uh, understanding how difficult it will be to make Afghan peasants uh, be involved in real agriculture. This is uh, where international assistance is required, and Russia is getting ready for a new program of restoring Afghanistan. So we are talking about Syria, which has been destroyed uh, to the ground, uh, and uh, there is Afghanistan in a similar position. What's next? And I think uh, that uh, when we shape the information picture of the world, we should in the first place uh, refer to the challenges of the modern times, the challenges uh, which should be a great concern uh, for everyone, Europe, uh, America, Eurasia, 
uh, the area where the Russian Federation is situated, Eurasia. Only under these conditions so we can build uh, a kind of security system and what's most important is to restore the economy which can produce new jobs, salaries to people, wages and salaries to people, people who would be prepared uh, to abandon weapons and to start uh, a peaceful life. Otherwise, if we don't do that, uh, hostilities will continue, if not in one region, then in another, not, middle, not the Middle East, then Europe. And nowadays, uh, all these uh, movements, movements of uh, migrants, of labor migrants, people who want jobs, must be analyzed from the point of view of security, security for the uh, villages and towns which they are leaving. Why so? Because we don't know how, uh, this, uh, their, their, uh, how the situation will be resolved in Europe, in the European Union. Uh, we cannot predict uh, how Turkey, headed by Erdogan, is going to behave. But we believe uh, that the economic basis is uh, an important priority. It must be high on the agenda of the international community, uh, embodied uh, by the uh, United Nations and its agencies which are, which are involved in the humanitarian operations in Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan. And uh, there should be very uh, well organized information support coming from you journalists because nowadays uh, uh, shaping uh, the public opinion is one of the most important factors if we really want uh, terrorism to be defeated, if we want it to retreat in the Middle East. Thank you.